Sempre, sempre, sempre. Hello! To quote Bilal, bonsoir Paris. Hello! Hi! Oh my goodness, hello. It's been so long since we had a live chat. I am so happy that Junior Eurovision is bringing them back. Can I check? Can you hear me okay? Is the sound coming through? Sempre. Simpre. Oh, thank you, Miguel Dorian Osan. I am trying to bring the energy. I just came home from work. It looks like the sound is working. Thank you, Miguel and others. You guys, the jury show has just taken place inside the Glavica Arena. This is so exciting. Online voting is open. So I thought with all this going on, we could go through the running order and see what you guys are thinking, maybe share some inside information that we're hearing on the ground and talk about the clips that people chose um, for the online voting. Because it was really interesting. When I watched the online voting recap, my opinion really changed because of the clip that people chose. I just want to start by asking, did any of you have a change of opinion when you were voting compared to when you heard the studio versions? While you're thinking about that, I will tell you something. The Netherlands has really grown for me. Before I liked it, it was my honorable mention. But then when you see it on the stage, the Netherlands is like very good, very good, very professional, very like, I don't want to say X Factor boy band, but it just felt very mainstream in a way that I think will appeal to both kids and adults. I'm trying to read through all your comments. C. Koval says, my only change was Netherlands in top five instead of Poland. That is going to be controversial, but very interesting. I take your point. I think Poland staging um, from the clips we've seen in rehearsals maybe isn't as high impact as the music video was, but it's still very good. Vicky can sing and she's got a great outfit with those lights. I'm uh, not lights, mirrors. Um, and I think on the camera, that'll look very effective when you see it cut close. They really did Kazakhstan dirty in the short clip. That's what Salty XEE says. Curiously, I thought the Kazakh clip was quite good because he has motion. He sort of, you know, in the actual performance, Kazakhstan stands there, as you should, because he's, you know, it's a power ballad. But in the clip they show, he's moving forward and there's kind of like whoosh. Um, and I thought it helped bring it to life, actually. I don't want to say who I voted for, but I'll just say the Kazakh clip did win me over. It kind of improved um, for me. What else are you guys saying? Poland disappoints me in a slow motion. Ah, I see. So Harut kind of wants more energy for that song. Yeah, that's one take. I think sometimes people think it's interesting when a dance song that's upbeat has a slower vibe, but I guess some people do want the kind of rhythm and flow. I thought it was quite artistic, what Poland's going for. The big, what do you call it? The bold colors, you know, the, the colored eye, a big pink splash on one of the dancers. Um, yeah, it's an avant-garde take. It wasn't what I was expecting, but it's, it's still very good. I mean, they're no weak, this is like not a weak show. This show is quite strong overall. The stage looks amazing. The kids sound great. Yeah, I'm really pleased. I think this is very, very competitive. <clears throat> All right. Ooh, so many comments. I am living for this. But look, why don't we start from the beginning of the running order, just so we're all on the same page and talking about the same thing. And that is Australia. Jordan Anthony, we will rise. Before rehearsals, you know, I thought it was good, but I wasn't blown away. However, hearing him live, I think really changes the situation. He is an amazing vocalist and he makes the song more interesting. I think he makes the song, I don't know, it has a soul because of him. You know, you could apply this to bullying, you know, we will rise, we will overcome. It, adults can relate to that, kids can relate to that. It's a universal message, perseverance. Who doesn't love a song about perseverance? Thoughts on Australia. Jason Marshall says, Australia is by far the standout. His vocals and staging is leaps above the rest. That is an endorsement. 
Um, Dina says, I love it when Jordan is playing with the camera and his voice is amazing. You know what? I do like how he plays with the camera. He, of course, was on The Voice in Australia and he really uses the stage. He stands, you know, at one point singing to the mic. He moves to the piano. There are the golden lights behind him. He's got his backing vocalist. They're in very tasteful clothes. It's, it's just, it's very appropriate. They're not trying to be outlandish. It's not over the top. Yeah, it's very Australia by numbers, but that's a compliment, like playing it safe in a good way. Um, you are welcome, Harut. You guys, any other thoughts on Australia or Australia's clip in the online voting? Nick K says, Australia is just okay pop. Juries will like it a lot, but I think the online voting won't show good results for him. Um, and William said, William Degley Anthony, not William Lee Adams, says Australia has been sending the same entry since 2015. That's an interesting point. When we talk about playing it safe, they do like the genre of kind of, is it a mid-tempo ballad? I don't know, a very modern radio-friendly mid-tempo ballad about perseverance. Yeah, it's worked for them. Um, but yeah, JL had a similar vibe last year, actually. I didn't think about that. But I must say, I evaluate this on its own terms, and he's an amazing performer, and I think it's very, very classy. And I also should add, I like oh, Ramon says Australia will rise for sure. Yes, he will. I quite like the clip they chose um, of Australia. It made me like it much more. Um, last night when I was voting, things got really complicated. Things got really complicated, and it's because in the snippet, you know, if we're going to let people vote on snippets, we have to talk about the snippets. He had a great snippet, so well done him. Final thoughts on Australia. ESC, Matt Gaga, Jordan's vocals are amazing. Can't deny that. Amen. Hallelujah. Why you only speak about Australia? Ana Maria Espejo Repiso. We're going by the running order. And so next, we move on to France. Carla Bim Bam Toi. That is Bim Bam Toi from France. You guys, what do you think? I'll start with some... Okay. Pasta Blanche. France's shots are too slow, unfortunately, and you can barely see the balloon pop in the clip. Hopefully they'll improve it for the show. Still love the song though. Radislav, France's chances for top five may be ruined because they're placed second by the producers. You know, it's an interesting point. At Junior Eurovision, Axe have won from second place. In fact, the very first winner of Junior Eurovision from Croatia, he won out of second spot. I think in the recap, Carla really stands out. You know, her colors. I think her and Albania, are they the only two with lots of pink? She really stands out. The cartoon effect on the LED, the bim, bam, twa, the umbrellas. There's a lot going on here that's very original that you don't see in the other acts. I think vocally, she's on point. It's funny, if you watch her on her Instagram, Instagram stories, she's running around, she's saying hello, she's taking selfies. She's having a great time. And I think that fun and enthusiasm really comes through on the stage. She's very likable, very buoyant, buoyant. Like, you know, y'all say that buoyant, bubbly, ebullient. She, yeah, she's slaying the personality stakes and she sounds great. We heard from our reporters in Glavica, in Poland, that she's a little bit under the weather. She's not like deadly ill, but she's not feeling her best, um, but she's pushing through. So well done her. It's even more impressive how she's pushing through and staying strong. Okay, you guys, what comments do you have about France? I love Bim Bam Toi. It's so different and energetic. That's Marilyn Keetel. Um, if France was in the second half, they would have a chance of winning. That's Eurovision New York. If France was in the second half, oh yes, Eurovision New York. <laughs> um, Stefan ESC, France is a catchy, playful song. She's between my voted ones. Uh, oh, thank you so much, Sasha. Sasha Bonds, you're very nice. Merci beaucoup. Um, je t'aime. Uh, salut. Comment vas-tu? Je vais bien. <laughs> you're amazing. Um, hey, William, when's the final? Jillian, the final is on Sunday. I believe it's at 4 CET. Yeah, 4 CET. It'll be on juniorurevision.tv. Juniorurevision.tv. Um, France is my ninth, says Super Banana Nightcore. Amazing, but not as strong. Um, I voted for Carla, says someone in Hebrew. Um, I can't read Hebrew. I would say her name, but I don't know what that says. Um, Carla has great stage presence, says Vanya. Vanya, are you the same Vanya from Twitter? You're very active on Twitter, Vanya Lejubich, I believe. You're welcome, Jillian. 
Um, France result will be, I don't know that word, Lizzie. Um, I don't think Carla will do better than Angelina. Uh, France is again going to be in the top three, Nick K says. Online voting is going to boost them. Now, this is an interesting point. I was looking at Carla's Instagram stories, and a lot of French celebrities are sharing the voting link and saying, please vote for Carla, including Patrick Moragalu, Serena Williams, the tennis player, her coach or ex-coach. He's really famous. And all these other pop stars from lots of reality shows are also sharing the link. And so Carla's team is playing a very smart game. This is what you have to do. You've got to get the support out there. And as we know, last year, Roxy won the televote by a huge, huge margin. A lot of people think a lot of published people voted for her. I think a lot of French people will vote for Carla. And France has a massive population. Um, like, what is the population of France? France population, is it like 60 million? Let's see. France population, yeah, 67 million. One of the biggest countries in Europe. It's gonna help her. All right, Orani, Orani Abbas, she is a gorgeous designer from Movie Blog. She says even the mayor from her own town is sharing the links. He's a deputy and kind of famous here. Well, there you go. And Orani says 67, y'all, I just Googled it. 66.99 million, yes, I get it. <laughs> okay, you guys, we gotta move on. Final thoughts, ESC, Matt Gaga, France has a very big chance to win, I agree. It's quality. What I really like about the French act is it's tasteful and age appropriate. It's very playful, kid friendly. She wants to be there, I love it. We gotta move on though to the third act, Russia. This is Tatiana Mejnetseva and Denebril Urzok with a time for us. Now we've got to talk about the fact that earlier in this week he had a real struggle. He became ill on stage during their first rehearsal, during the third run through, I believe. He passed out, but he was immediately seen by medical staff. He was taken to hospital. His grandmother went with him. Later, um, the EBU released a statement via the Junior Eurovision.tv Twitter saying he's okay, he's getting the help he needs. It was in RIA Novosti, the Russian media agency. And then his singing partner, Tanya, Tatiana rather, also said he's doing okay. And you know what, the next morning, we got some pics backstage. He was smiling. He was happy. He's doing great. So that is what's most important. This is how you bounce back, okay? That's how you bounce back. It, it's really impressive that he's managed to keep going. So well done to him. I really like that they feel like brother and sister. Like he's 13, she's nine. They clearly get along. They clearly want to sing together. I think sometimes when you have duets at the adult Eurovision or the kids Eurovision, it's like, People got thrown together. You're like, they would never talk in real life. Whereas these kids seem like real friends. They really want to be there. Um, space age performance are like futuristic ghostbusters. You know, they could do pet extermination on Mars. It's very futuristic, very chic. I really like the look. Um, completely different again. Variety. That's the word this year is variety. It's just everything is so unique. William, can you please block the spammers? I wish I, so I'm trying to follow the comments, but then I'm trying to like, I'm like trying to triangulate, it's confusing. Um, Russia, Thomas Halek, Russia is so underrated, but in the performance, they could do more. Um, yeah, I, I take your point. I think that the strength of Russia, you will see when they, the camera cuts from what I've heard from reporters on the ground and from friends, is that it does look good on the camera. Because in the rehearsal clips, you're seeing it flat, but producers have cut it in different ways. So it looks more interesting um, on the TV show than what you're seeing on the stage. And that's the same for all the acts, is that what we see on the YouTube rehearsal clips, it's like flat, but it's all about the angles and camera. Casper says it looks kind of empty. Um, Stefan, um, can you please add a slight timer? How do I do that? Suzanne the Extinguisher, how do I add a timer, y'all? I don't understand. Um, R Blood Red Clone says, Russia's song is decent overall, but nothing blows me away. Um, Vanya, their voices blend well. I totally agree. Who is your winner? Ooh, Miranda B. Now I'm trying to keep it a secret, but there were a few songs that I really, really like. I will reveal them later. 
Dina Lorona says, I'm happy that Denebril is okay. I was shocked when I read on YouTube that he had a heart attack. Yeah, he didn't have no heart attack. That was an exaggeration. People, the rumor mill was, the rumor mill was going real fast. He is doing fine. Um, yes. All right. Final thoughts on Russia. We're going to move on. Final thoughts. Russia has nice staging and I like their style. That's E-S-C-F-A-U-N. And Denebril sing better in live than in the studio, says Super Banana. Banana. Yeah, he's got a great voice. A very low-pitched voice. It reminds me of a young Dima Balan. He's going to be very, very successful. All right, the fourth country, North Macedonia, Mila Moskov, Fire, Fuego. You guys, this before rehearsals, this was definitely my number one. I love that music video. I, I love her voice. She's very natural. You know, she just... She is just doing her thing. The poor, um, I want to say not woman, teenager, the poor teen queen had an accident. Like her leg was in a brace. She rocked on the red carpet anyways. She said, I'm still going to slay the red carpet. North Macedonia is going to do amazing with the juries. I can guarantee you that 100%. Tamara Tadevska 2.0. I don't know if she'll win the jury, but she's going to do well. This will be, you know what? I will say that this will be North Macedonia's best ever finish. Best ever. Best ever. No doubt. I have no doubt. ESC fan forever. North Macedonia is my winner. Uh, ESC likes Macedonia best. Um, Eric says he doesn't like the dress, but he loves the staging. Um, Maria M, her voice is amazing. You guys, you're so right. Stephania Harper, Mila Moskov is fire and deserves top three. Hopefully she's going to go get as many jury votes as Tamara Tadeska. I think, yeah, it's a good point. I really think she could vocally at some point. That song is very contemporary. You could hear I'm Like a Fire at the adult Eurovision. You really, really could. And this is just a teenage girl. She's what, 13, 14? It's amazing. The vocal talent here is un believable. It, it's just, it is next level. I absolutely love Mila Moskov. Um, yeah, I think the LED is also cool how you have that sort of, is it a tree on fire, a tree with a little, well, first it's blue, this wood nymph, and then it becomes red, and like you see it becoming the fire. It's got the fire, it is the fire, bring in the heat, bring in the fuego, honey. <laughs> Thomas Hollick says North, is that like, uh, yeah, Thomas Hollick, sorry. North Macedonia is wow. I like her performance, the fire in the background of the stage, just wow. And I like her wings when she develops the red wings. Very Conchita verse, very rise like a phoenix, except our girl is not put down. She is already standing tall. Okay, she don't need to rise because she is standing tall. I love this. Nick K, North Macedonia is truly amazing. Um, Suzanne the Extinguisher, thank you so much for that. I'm going to look into that for next time. Apologies, I don't know how to do that right now, but you make a very, very good point. I will not extinguish that comment. I'm going to keep that in mind. Oh, yes, and the lyrics, they added more Macedonian, I believe, didn't they? Um, they made it even more organic. I don't have no heat at the moment. It's really good. Okay, we need to move on. We need, oh, final question. Gatau Nikasan says, we be blogs, do you think North Macedonia can battle Poland, France, and Spain for the title? That's really interesting. So I think that um, I'm like a fire. I like that little thing in the tree. You know, in the tree, it, there's like the cutout in the tree. Anyways, I think that the what juries go for and what, kid voters go for and what teenage voters and adult voters go for are all very different things. Like, I think they're all different. I think with the jury, certainly, yes, North Macedonia can challenge 100%, like 100%. Televote, I just don't know. I mean, obviously it helps if you're from a big country or like you have a big diaspora. That's just a fact. So like you would think France, Spain, Poland, like these are big countries. Um, whereas North Macedonia is a bit smaller. At the same time, Serbia is here. You got to think that Serbia and North Macedonia will show each other some love. It, there are a lot of factors at play, but I think North Macedonia is deserving of competing. And with the jury, they definitely will. All right. We got to move on to country number five. That is uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, cinco, cinco. Yes, it is Spain. Hola, España. Is anyone on this chat from Spain? Is anyone from Spain? Ah, William, Degli, Anthony, El Cuarto, Gato, Alexis, Trobar, Gabriel, Rocha, Drosa, Ray Morales. Y'all, I'm watching Elite. You know this Netflix series, Elite? It is so 
good. It is so addictive. I am on season one. Don't tell me what happens. Uh, me, hola, Alexis, hola, Dro, hola, Carlos. This is what I love. Spanish fans, I mean, all Eurovision fans are passionate. Let's be real. But in Spain, there are a lot of Euro fans. So the passion is like, it's like nuclear. Spanish fans are nuclear. They really are. And I mean that in a good way. It's like this fusion of passion. Um, and, you know, that's why there's often Euro drama in the adult Eurovision, because, you know, fans are passionate. They let out their fuego. Como cuando lo vaya. You can't take away their fun. In any case, the Spanish <laughs> Dro exclamation says the Spanish fans are going to save the ESC junior. You know what? I must say, Spanish fans have definitely brought a new level of interest to the contest. Whenever we post about Melanie on our Instagram or our Twitter, it's insane. It just, it goes insane. And it's not just Spanish people. A lot of people love her. I've got to be honest. When I watched the music video, I was like, she's very, very good. And the song to me was good, but it wasn't amazing. However, then I saw it live. I saw her at rehearsal. When she sings the song live, the song becomes better. This is very rare. Usually it's the other way around. Usually you hear it live and you're like, Woo! but with Melanie, it gets better because her voice is that good. This is a huge compliment. Very few people can do that. I'm talking Celine Dion. I'm talking Conchita Verst, okay? Very few queens can elevate live and she really does that. That's one element. Then you've got the staging. Little Mermaid, who? The Little Mermaid Ariel is gone and it is all about Melanie Garcia. Okay, Melanie's voice is magical. Yes, Eric Jamaharayan. I don't know how she can have such a voice while being so young. I don't get it. It's just amazing. Salt X-E-E, -E, Salt C. Melanie is so cute and she seems so happy to just be there. The best of the ecological songs, great voice, amazing staging and such a fun personality. There's a lot to unpack there. Many ecological songs this year. I think the staging of this one is maybe the most uplifting. This ecological song, Greta, Turn Greta Thunberg meets The Little Mermaid. It's at once academic, you know, cerebral, cerebral, but then also cute. It's like, it's just combining so much. The staging is just genius. I think this LED is among the most beautiful we have ever seen at the Junior Eurovision or the adult Eurovision. That is the power that RTVE has put into this. This is amazing. So yes, there's the LED behind with the fish, the jellyfish, the water, the bubbles. But then in front of her, the physicality. There is stuff hanging like nets, like they're, they're little ornaments in the sky to make bubble like bubble figures. It's just very well thought out. It is absolutely stunning. The blue and like the circle reminds me of Adirne 2015. There's a moment in Adirne's performance. There's like a famous photo where it's all blue and there's a circle. It's just amazing. Like, I think that Spain is definitely a contender to win Junior Eurovision 2019. Hands down, hands down. My hands are down. This is amazing. Don't see it and say, you need to levant and say. What stand up? Is that levant and say or see it and say? All I know is I need to stand up for Melanie. <laughs> Melanie kills it. It's just amazing. The other point that Salty CXC brought up with her personality, she has so much personality. She's always laughing, smiling, dancing, jumping. She wants to be there. You know, a few years ago, the Scandinavian countries pulled out of Junior Eurovision one by one. And they were like, mm, this is like, they just thought maybe the kids weren't the priority. They were worried about the well-being of the children. I got to say, Melanie's an example of a child who is absolutely thriving in this environment. No one's pushing her. It seems she wants to be there. She wants to do this. And I love it. The Spanish team, shout out to Ana Bordas. They clearly care about the performer and they've given her the space to do her thing. It's just, it's wonderful. I, yeah, I... I don't know what, what else I can say. I don't like opera, says Selka Ah. I'm not a huge fan of opera either. However, I love this performance. It's like, I don't go around downloading music from The Little, Little Mermaid, but you know what? I'll listen to part of your world. I will listen to part of your world under the sea. I think it's about the full package, not just the song. Would I listen to this as a studio cut? No. Would I watch Melanie live slaying it on stage? Yes. Would I vote for that? Yes. Did I vote for that? Yes. That was one of the five I voted for. Okay, Spain got one of my votes, y'all. I'm not supposed to reveal, but I love, love Spain. 
Maria M, the lyrics are amazing. She talks as if she were the C asking for help. Oh, that's really beautiful. That is really beautiful. She becomes a metaphor for the ocean, for the sea. Marte means Mars, I believe. It, there's a lot going on here that I just absolutely love. Oh my Lord, have mercy. All right, William, where part of Spain do you like to celebrate the festival? El Cuarto Gato, take me to Barcelona. I have never been to Barcelona. I want to go to Barcelona because I hear it's one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Um, all right. Ambimelic Velasquez is the time of Spain now, you know? <gasps> oh, in time makes a very good point. All of South America is voting for Melanie. Viva España. That is a very, very interesting point. We talk about diasporas within Europe, but think about all the connections between Spain and Latin America. Spanish speaking world, people going back and forth, spreading the love of junior Eurovision. That is a very, very, very good point. I didn't think about that. Yo, Argentina is calling. Colombia, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Paraguay, Uruguay, Chile, Ecuador, Bolivia, Panama. All these Spanish speaking countries are gonna slay for Spain. Ah! It's exciting. I would, you know, I might actually return to Junior Eurovision. I haven't been in years. I went like eight times and then I stopped going. But if it was in Spain, you better believe I would be there. I would be there. All right. Uh, yes, Maria M. It's a game we play. It's this game we used to play where you go, Nicaragua. Paraguay, and the first person not to name a Latin or Central American country is eliminated. Okay, this is basic. Anyways, we're moving on. We've got to move on. Oh, thank you so much, Miguel Doran Ocaño. Quiero comer totala ensalada de queso. I'm from America. We have um, a very healthy, vibrant Mexican American community. So I speak a little bit of the Spanish. All right, moving on. It's going to be Georgia. Sixth, Georgie Rossiashvili. We need love. Ain't that the truth? Georgia, what do you guys think of Georgia? Pasha was funny. That ain't true, though. Georgia, you guys. Georgia. Um, y'all, I need y'all to comment on Georgia. Okay. Um, well, Georgia is a beautiful country. I gotta say, I love Georgian people. Whenever I go to Georgia, there's so much vivacity, energy, positivity. They are powerhouses of Junior Eurovision, they've won more than anyone. What I like about Georgie's performance is the LED is so colorful, so cartoonish. It's among the most kid-friendly, I would say. I love when the airplane is flying, and not that it, it doesn't crash, but it goes into the distance and releases all these hearts. Yes, just as Yolanda Sarah says, Georgia is just darling. Maruv Queen, I didn't know Maruv Queen was there, says Georgian boy, really cute. The personality shines through, doesn't it? The kind of love of life, the zest of life. Um, yeah, Gabriel says you can't have Junior Eurovision without Georgia. That's totally true. Oh, Ashalyan says, we all know Georgia is the king of JSC, so he might surprise us. Um, and Panbuck says, Georgia tried something out of the box. Um, yeah, he did. He tried something different. So we've got a shout out to him. All right. Well, we're going to move on from Georgia to number seven, Belarus. Liza Misnikova, Pepelny, Ashen. Ain't nothing Ashen about this performance. <laughs> this performance is color. This performance is so bright, very urban. Like a few years ago, they brought some skateboarders from Belarus. They love this urban vibe, and I think it works for them. She's got great attitude, great sizzle, very confident. She's just, yeah, she's great. At ESC Finn says, Ashen is like a 10 million out of 10. Eric Jamarian says, I like her song. Vanya says she's got personality. Jamie A says Belarus is a bop. Oh yeah, Madeline Bowden. Thank you for bringing this up. She loves the anime. Madeline is absolutely right. There is Japan anime anime going on. Very cool. People were actually naming the characters earlier. I'm not like, I don't follow manga, but like clearly a lot of people do. So maybe that will help her in the voting. Um, Thomas says, I love it, but live it loses points. Um, Ari Eurovision, first time I ever heard the word ashen. So I have heard this word many times in my life. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Panbox says Belarus has no, the staging has no child quality to it. Yeah, it's a mature performance, definitely. I think 
uh, different countries, some countries go more toward like the teen 14 market and others go toward like the nine year old kids market. It's always interesting to see where countries choose to pitch themselves because, you know, when you have a competition for nine to 14 year olds, you get huge variance. All right. Well, we're going to move on to the next one. Ten. No, sorry. Not oh, eight. Malta, Eliana Gomez Blanco, we are more. I should point out that Wee Wee blogger, former Wee Wee blogger, Kevin, he co-wrote the song. Congratulations to him. Did a great job. This, is, again, is a very mature performance. This is more of the, you know, she's 14 or 13 or 14. So this is a more radio-friendly pop song. You could hear this in the Malta Eurovision Song Contest, the adult version. Um, thoughts on Malta? Jamie Hopkins, Malta staging, and her voice is amazing. Underrated, my winner. High praise indeed from Jamie Hopkins. Gabrielle, Malta does a lot in Junior Eurovision. Yes, she does. Mickey Rimi, are you finished? Love her voice and song, but the staging could be, be could be better. Yeah, I think the staging is very simple for Malta. However, it gets more pace when they do the camera cuts. It is very um, st static when you see it in rehearsal. But, you know, she's got her hat. She's doing her thing. She's got her booties. She's like a confident singer, like singer-songwriter vibe, you know? She looks like a singer-songwriter singing her song and doing her thing and yeah, it's nice. It's, it's a pure performance, very pure. Uh, Miguel says Malta was a little out of tune at the jury rehearsal. Um, I sadly was not there, so I cannot comment on that. And the high notes are very impressive, Luke Gallagher says. El Cuarto says Malta is good. I think Malta is doing a top 10 easy. And then Josh Kinnan, hello, Josh Kinnan of WeWe Blogs. He says he admires what Malta is trying to do with the song. Um, he just worries the staging doesn't maybe match it. But he is right. The camera cuts do give it more energy. I asked about this, um, some people who were there, and they, they said, yes, the camera cuts do help. All right, you guys, we got to move on to the next country. And that is Wales. Aaron, my heart beating. What do you think of Wales? This is an example of a simple staging that works like it fits the song this is very simple staging i mean it's essentially led um and then she has some wings towards the end very very simple but like it's fine because it fits the adorable vibe like this is very deliberately kind of girly pink purple hearts love valentines she's going for that feel and that is perfectly okay and i think it will appeal especially to younger listeners in the recap, what really surprised me was how much this stood out. Because when I listened to them, you know, this wasn't one of the standout tracks to me, if I'm honest. However, when I see it, and then when I see it in the recap, it does stand out. You remember it. Whether you like it or not, that's down to your personal taste, but it definitely stands out, and she can sing. Kuba K says, why Wales, not United Kingdom, like in adult Eurovision? So the BBC is the broadcaster for the United Kingdom, but it doesn't want to participate in Junior Eurovision. So the individual countries, the constituent countries, Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland, England, th there are other broadcasters and there's like a Welsh broadcaster. There's a Northern Irish, you know, there's a Scottish broadcaster and they, those networks can join the EBU and participate. And so that's why Wales has gone that way because Wales wanted in, but the BBC did not. So Aaron is just adorable, says Vanya. Nickin, Nickin things, oh, Nick, like stealing things? Nickin things says, Wales has a colorful and nice song. I think I like it, maybe a seven out of 10. Mickey Remy, everything is perfect, but I just can't, oh, <laughs> I just can't stand the song. Um, Zoe Cheney says, Wales did an eco song last year and it came last. And now all the eco songs this year are appreciated. That's a very good point, Eco Cheney. I think that maybe Greta Thunberg has sort of raised awareness at all levels about the environment. It's sad that Greenland is melting, can I just say, and other places. Yeah, we got to cut our carbon, carbon usage, okay, for real. Um, all right, any other thoughts on Wales? Yes, Joanna Lima Bernardo Tavares Pereira was a juror in Portugal, um, but we can't discuss that, sadly, because it's all secret so he and i haven't even discussed that how he voted and i don't know what he thinks of the song says like, wales i don't want them to come last because i don't want them to withdraw yeah i don't want wales to withdraw either but i think that the welsh broadcaster understands the importance of having the welsh language and welsh culture on show so i think they will stay here for a lot of smaller countries like this this is a huge like a huge opportunity to showcase your culture because you don't always hear Welsh. Like I, I live in London, right? This, Wales is a constituent part of the UK, but I don't hear Welsh all the time. It's really great that they have this platform. All right, we're gonna move on. 
We're going to move on to Kazakhstan. Yershan Maxim, he is 10th in the running order. Another big pass.